talking about? They got everybody. <laughs> well, there you go. What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride share extraordinaire, your super duper Uber drivers here, guys. Yeah, yeah, thank you. You guys already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. Poor favor. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Hop on in. Buckle in. And let's go. Yeah! Okay, okay. Party people, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. All right, what are we talking about today, folks? What are we talking about today? Man, oh man, so the other day, matter of fact, it was yesterday, uh, Mr. Trump came through Atlanta to do some fundraising. And before he went to the event, he went down to the roughest part of Atlanta. If you guys know Atlanta, we have Vine City and Martin Luther King Drive runs right through there. And there's a Chick-fil-A that is right there. Or Martin Luther King. You guys, you know how I feel about Martin Luther King uh, uh, Boulevards, Avenues. It's the roughest part of town. Anywhere USA, if there's an MLK street there, lock your doors. <laughs> but Mr. Mr. Trump went anyway. And there's a Chick-fil-A there. I love Chick-fil-A. Every Chick-fil-A I've been to um, have the same cookie cutter with the people, the food. It's the same. All right. Now, Vine City, they have a special, it's a special part of Atlanta. Okay. And even this Chick-fil-A is kind of, it's kind of seedy. All right. What? The security, there's a security guard at the Chick-fil-A. So, you know, it's bad. There's a Walmart right next to the Chick-fil-A. And that Walmart has two or three armed security. Okay, so I'm telling you, it's a rough part of town. The Chick-fil-A there, although it's like near the um, Atlanta University Center, AUC, it's a lot of college students. Um, but again, still, it's a seedy part of town. But you think it stopped Donald Trump? No. No, 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 no. Mr. Trump goes to the hood. Goes to Chick Fil A, and let's take a look at the response. Thank you very much. We'll give them out to the people and we'll take some for ourselves, okay? Thank you very much, everybody. The young girls, they all, you see, they all demeanor changed. They were more feminine. They were all giggly and happy and happy to see Trump. Giving them hugs. Couldn't wait to give them hugs. Praising him. This one girl says, I don't care what the media tells you, Mr. Uh, Trump. We support you. We support you, Mike. Okay, 4 p.m. We do 4 p.m. Come here, let me give you a hug. <laughs> I don't care what the media says about you. We're still going to support you. What? And these girls are all under 25. The young generation. Generation Z. Black voters. Young black voters. At Chick-fil-A. Praising Donald Trump. Now, I got some trolls. I got a few trolls here. Who will ask me why would a black man support Trump and all this? Why would they support a racist? Everybody sees that Donald Trump is not a racist. Yeah, can my friend Dom get in one too? Yes. Listen, she 
Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. We're going to get rid of Byron. Bye, bye, sleepy. He is the worst president in the history of the United States. And he's horrible to the black community. Whether you like it or not, he Been that way the since black senator. community bad. And check out his record in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. Check out his record in the 1990s. Your economic was for us. Yes. Well, opportunity. Opportunity for us. Yep. Best job numbers ever. The first step egg. Let's yeah, talk about it. And again, yeah, the colleges and universities. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get the whole thing now. Yeah. 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 I got you. Don't worry. So Donald Trump is getting giving hugs to the young girls and he's running down Biden's history. And these girls already know. The guys in the background, they already know about Biden's history when he was a senator. They know about the crime bill in 1992. They already know all this. So they know they made a mistake the first time. This go around, they're not going to make that same mistake. They're not going to make the same mistake. No. Now we have one example of how Trump goes around and do retail politics. And let's take a look how Biden do retail politics. Come on. Oh, I mean, you got chicken fingers. You got all the other. Oh, I want the root of making sure I had the hamburger. So tell me about you guys. What you doing these days? Why don't you share about your passion of sports? I'm playing AAU basketball right now. Are you really? Are you guard? Yes, sir. Now, what grade are you in? Seventh grade. Seventh grade. Right now I'm just doing basketball, playing guard on the JV team for my school. How about the school? How y'all doing in school? You should tell the president about the school. Favorite thing about it is the business academy I'm in. We get to like travel, so we've been to like NC State, uh, Wake Tech, and we. You're we, kidding me. Yeah, we went to this small dry cleaning business, and it's just it's cool. It's a great experience. I'm impressed. Yeah, yeah. Biden over here is pandering. This is one thing that Donald Trump does not do. He does not pander. He says what he says, and he just say it. If you're on board, you're cool. If you're not on board, oh well. He doesn't go to little Hispanic villages and let me get a taco. And, and oh, I love taco. Taco's my favorite food. He doesn't do that. Biden will do that. That's old school retail politics. You never see Trump pander to nobody. He doesn't go to a little China. And so, oh, let me get some, you know, Egg Foo Young or whatever. I love Egg Foo Young. That's my favorite. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. He goes to everybody's regular. Uh, he'll go to McDonald's. He'll go to KFC. KFC is his favorite uh, restaurant. He go to Chick-fil-A. And he just order food, milkshakes for everybody, and keep it moving. But he doesn't go around kissing babies and, oh, I love black babies. And he doesn't do it. He don't have to do all that. He doesn't have to do all that. But you see the difference between how Biden does his retail politics and how Trump does his retail politics. Two vast differences. Let's go. This is uh, uh, Morgan Sherwin. Uh, this is Morgan Sherwin and uh, Sam Sarudi. Uh, 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 there are uh, our team members here. Uh, they help us. They uh, they help us, uh, you know, service and sales. Good to see you. Now we have some more bad news for Biden. All right, MSNBC had a poll with undecided voters, and Mika was hosting it. Let's take a listen of the response. The undecided voters were also asked how they think President Biden is doing on the economy. Take a listen. I think he's been absolutely disastrous for the economy. Mm -hmm. I agree. So you raise your hand if you think President Trump's policies on the economy would be better for your family personally. Raise your hand. All right. So that is everybody. Is there anything Joe Biden could do or say between now and, and, and the time you vote? That would make you feel differently about feeling that his policies would not be as good for your family on the economy? Or have you, are you pretty much decided that Trump's policies would be better for the I, economy? I mean, I feel like he doesn't even take accountability for what's at all with what's going on in the economy. Not even accountability. Like, he's in denial that it's happening. The point is Biden needs to hear the people because when he's talking about the economy doing stellar, he's talking about the stock market. He's not looking at homelessness or joblessness. He's not at AG's point and thinking about how much it costs to go to the grocery store. And he's gaslighting. 
literally everyone in the process. Okay. And, and Omar, you voted for Joe Biden last time, right? Yeah, yeah. Some really important and hard insights for the Biden campaign to hear there and hearing all that. You might think things are pretty bad for President Biden. That was not good. <laughs> Mika sees the writing on the walls. This is why you don't see Joe Scarborough over there because he couldn't stomach it either. But Mika had to do the job. And you see the look on her face. She didn't even want to say the words that Biden's in trouble. It doesn't look good for Biden. Everybody was on one thing. All these eight, nine undecided voters talk about the economy. And they give Trump. These all people, all these people voted for Biden before. Independent voters voted for Biden before. And now they're undecided. But they're all talking about the economy. And I don't care what Biden says, try to gaslight us, talking about what economy. The economy is great, blah, blah, blah. And everybody see it. Everybody feels it. And these sample right here, this little sample right here of undecided voters, they're all saying the same thing. Biden, you're in trouble because of the economy and because you like to gaslight people. We're on to you now. Well, that's my thought for today. I hope you guys got some value out of my content. If you did, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. You see that notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends and tell your mama I said hi. <laughs> all right, all right. Till next time, guys, I'll see you again. And all you chicken heads, get off my lawn. <laughs>